Twas the black before Christmas, and all through the dawn, the scene was deserted but for old pops and mom. There they sat hung in their big easy chair, goofed on eggnog, sherry, and beer. Sis and little Junior lie snoozing in bed, while visions of Cadillacs dance in their heads. Moms jumped up and said, Pops, let's quit it to bed. We can't let Santa dig us with our eyes all red. Then out on the stoop, ooh wee, such a clatter. Pop split to the porthole to see what was the matter. His heart did the jumps and he fell straight back when his glimmers fell on a red Cadillac. Stashed in front was a cat cool as any with a red beaver hat and a red cashmere benny. His ground pads were suede shoes and his red tweed vine caused heavy dues. He wore a red on red shirt and a white mink tie. Some crazy rim glasses that covered one eye. Old Pop's peepers grew large, round, and white as he dug this crazy vista on Christmas Eve night. The cat leaped from his short and he laid down his sack. He began wailing like mad, the cool Applejack. Then up to the rooftops, the cat like flew. And the cat in red followed on through. Pops was wig behind this crazy scene, and before he was straight, down came the cat, right through the chimney grate. A bag of jive he had on his back as he stood digging Pops, who was blowing his stack. His eyeballs were hid by some cold black shades. When Pops dug this action, he knew this cat was made. A king-size cigarette hung from his chops as he eased up close and sounded on Pops. I'm the Bebop Santa from the cool North Pole, and I've been down since the days of old. I'm known all over from here to eternity, and a stud's mighty square if he don't dig me. So cast thy peepers into my righteous bag and see what insane object I shall lay on thee. Here's a record by Dez, cut when he was two, a real boss arrangement of Ulyaku for mom's a mink outfit, Chanel number no. five, and for you little kiddies, my new book on jive. So that's it, Pops, Santa did shout, then he buttoned his cashmere and quickly cut out. Poor Pops was wigging and he was out of his head to dig this wild character who wore all the red. He ran to the table to cop him a drink to quiet his nerves and to help him to think. Just then from below he heard a voice shout, have a crazy cool Christmas, but don't get knocked out. About a deuce of long black and whites ago, a stud from the natural lowlands arrived in the apple. He copped him a hame as a delivery cat on Lenox Avenue. Everything was fine as wine until he cut into Hollywood eyes. My man, he dug her all the way, but after lamping her quit the scene daily in the king of shorts, he figured he'd cool until his bread was long enough for him to sound her. One bright, about a deuce of ticks, he laid his story on a Harlem acquaintance named Congoline Freddy. He pulled Freddy's coat about his big eyes for this chick and how he'd pay any kind of dues to cop some long greens. Freddy, being a postgraduate and a six-year New York man, knew the pig when he saw it, so he yes the boo for a few blacks and then laid down his spiel. During the next set of sevens, Eddie was so gone over the three yards he had laying in the bin that he failed to dig nab stashed behind him while he paid his delivery dues. At the end of one semester of double deliveries, one for the man, a deuce for Congoline Freddy, Eddie lamped his bread and dug that he was now ready to cool by the pad of the crazy chick in style. He thanked Freddy for pulling his coat to the long green on the apple scene, but he had to quit it now as he didn't know for sure, but he kind of had an inkling in the back of his thinking cap that he'd better put a period to delivering them small packages for which he was gassed with huge looty bonds. Freddy, he was cool, he had no hard feelings, 
and to prove it, he sounded Eddie for the cereal to his crib, so he could lay a present on it. At exactly the Cinderella of chimes, the next black, a 200-pound old fake cat, rung Eddie's ding-dong. And after flashing his badge of many numbers, he pulled at his coat that since he was a real lame Jones, he wouldn't take him to the slammers if his greens was long enough. Eddie laid his grand on Nab, who stepped into his waiting cab, and split the bread down. A nickel note for him, and the other nickel for his buddy, Congoline Freddy. Yes, Eddie's jeans is clean, he's off the scene, and he didn't cop his queen. A Manhattan Fable.